We hear a lot of criticism about oil and gas today. I'm not going to address those criticisms today, although I do that often. I want to talk about the pluses. Everything in the world has pluses and minuses. What matters is the relative size of the two. I've made a list of the top 10 reasons I love oil and gas. First, a little background on history. Human life expectancy throughout all of human history, about 30 years, didn't grow amazingly through millennia. And then a lot happened in the last 200 years, driven by two things. The growth of human liberty, instead of all top-down kings, queens, chiefs, emperors, we got bottom-up empowerment of people, the growth of liberty, and we got an arrival of an incredible energy source, oil and gas. My top 10 list, number one, human life expectancy. Just since the first oil and gas well was drilled, human life expectancy has more than doubled. Today it's 72 years versus roughly 35 years when the first well was drilled. When the first oil and gas well was drilled, 90% of humanity lived in extreme poverty, less than $2 a day in today's money. Think of that. Think of how, how harsh life was. Today that's about 9% of people that live in poverty. 90% from in extreme poverty to 9%. That's still 700 million humans that energy is going to lift out of poverty, but a dramatic drop from before. Number three, the whales. Saved the whales. In the 1840s, there was a booming industry to produce whale oil. Mo Herman Melville's Moby Dick tells the story of whaling ships. We got up to a thousand ships plying all four of the world's oceans to kill whales. It wasn't for sport. It was for the few barrels of oil that's in the head of a whale. This oil brought a clean, safe uh, lighting oil for indoor light. Imagine the ability to have clean light in your house where you never had it before. Humans loved this and the demand for whale oil was insatiable. In the 1840s, the production of whale oil peaked because the whale population was being decimated. The growth in whaling ship count continued to grow as whale oil production declined as it got harder and harder to find whales. Um, Thankfully, oil, oil and gas arrived just in time. The first oil wells were drilled predominantly for lighting oil. Crude oil refined into kerosene provided just as safe, just as clean burning indoor light, but without the devastation of the whales. Ultimately, it became vastly cheaper and clean indoor lighting became not just a province of the wealthy, but became a, a subject of the masses. Um, and of course, we've had 150 years of rebound in the whale population. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Think of your life today without those transportation modes. How do you get to work? How do you pick up the kids? How do you go home? How do you do the things you do? How do you fly across the country to visit your parents or your kids or your grandparents? Um, enabled modern, number five, enabled modern life. Throughout all of human history, 90% of humanity worked on one thing, food production. Today, in our modern world, less than 2% of Americans work in raising animals or in farming. Um, I still love them, I'd be dead without them, but less than 2% of Americans today provide all the food for this country and, and, and bring us the largest food exporter in the world. Um, modern medicine, the internet, our entertainment industry, mountain climbing, outdoor adventures, all of those things impossible without oil and gas. Number six, the shale revolution has saved the consumers of the world well over a trillion dollars. Roughly $200 for every man, woman, and child on the planet. Um, for you wealthy folks watching, the you know, Hollywood types watching this video, that may not seem like a big deal, but to lower income people and to poor people, the cost of energy is critically important for the quality of their life. And the surging US oil and natural gas production uh, has dramatically lowered the cost of energy for the global population. Number seven, bringing back made in the USA. The cost of energy is critically important for certain manufacturing that's energy intensive. Think petrochemicals, steel, automobiles, fertilizer for farming, and the construction of batteries is a highly energy intensive industry. The United States now, together with our, our neighbor to the north in Canada, have the lowest energy prices of any major economy in the world. This is enormously uh, helpful for the growth and the reshoring of industry in the United States. 
Eliminate foreign dependency for oil. That's been a subject throughout my lives. It was huge in the late 70s. But just 15 years ago, the United States imported 60% of the total oil we consumed. Where are we today? In fact, as I sit here in late October of 2019, we've had three weeks in a row where the United States exported more oil and oil products than we imported. We're just crossing into a net oil exporter from by far and away the largest importer of oil. We were also, for many, many years, the world's largest importer of natural gas. And rapidly through the shale revolution, we're now the third largest exporter in the world of liquefied natural gas. Let's talk about our states. I live here in Colorado. Colorado today produces three times more energy than we consume. Talk about energy independence. We're a massive energy exporter. Texas, even, even more dramatically, Texas today produces 5 million barrels of oil a day. Only three, it would be the second largest oil producer in OPEC. It would be the fourth largest produce, oil producing uh, country in the world if it was a country. North Dakota itself produces more oil than roughly half the OPEC nations. So this growing made in America has grown our energy independence. Last, let's talk a little bit about climate change. CO2 emissions on a per person basis in the United States uh, last year were lower than any year since I was born. Since the early 1960s, we've never had a lower CO2 emissions per, per person in our country. What's driven this? It's been a, a market driven transition from coal as by far our largest supplier of electricity in the United States to natural gas. This wasn't mandated, this didn't come with an increase in cost. This is market driven, cheaper, cleaner electricity from natural gas versus coal. One last thing I'll close with on climate change that was also a big milestone last year in the year 2018. Just a hundred years ago, we had roughly a half a million people a year worldwide killed from extreme weather. That's dropped 95% to an average now more around 25,000 people a year, which is still far too many. And they're concentrated, of course, in poor countries without the same access to energy we have in the wealthy countries. But last year, certainly the first time in recorded history, less than 10,000 people were killed by extreme weather, 98% below where that, was a, where that was 100 years ago. Cheap, affordable energy, mostly through oil and gas, make our worlds possible and make our lives simply dramatically different than generations before us. While we have tons to be proud of in the tremendous progress of humanity over the last 150 to 200 years, still more work to be done. We still have a billion people on the planet today with no access to electricity, another billion with only a few hours a day, intermittent, unreliable electricity. And we have fully a third of humanity that still cooks like our ancestors did with wood, dung, sticks indoor in huts, and that indoor air pollution kills three million people every year. These are easily preventable deaths and easily lifted up lives. What do they need? They need the same things we have, reliable, cheap, available energy, which will dominantly come via electricity and direct access to hydrocarbons. Onwards we push. Thank you.